Welcome to Matsubrix. We have a lot of news. Uh, firmware 0.5 is released and this is bringing us a lot of new features and improvements. And I'd like to present some of them in this video. Probably the most uh, uh, visible uh, new feature is the support for semaphores or form signals. Form signal is a signal that has not just lights but also some movable parts. And uh, if you have a look at this example, this is a German uh, main semaphore signal, form signal. It has a blade here and it also has a light here. And traditionally those lights were um, lighted with a small gas lamp. So there is no um, switching uh, or there was no switching mechanism between the red and the green light. And I have tried to make this uh, as realistically as possible. If you have a look at the uh, visuals here, uh, and if you, uh, you can move this little part here, and um, the red transparent uh, round brick is then replaced by a green one, and that's how the light is changing. And this is all moving together with the blade. And of course, this is fully motorized and automated with a, you have already guessed it, a Matsu controller, uh, or to be more precise, a Matsu layout controller. So let's have a look how this is working. If I'm uh, switching it over with the rock rail, the signal is moving like this from the different aspects. So as you can see, the signal has two aspects, the stop aspect and the go aspect, red and green. Of course, there are also signals that have more than two aspects. Uh, for example, you have a signal here that has also a go slow aspect, uh, which is indicated uh, with the um, uh, lower blade uh, of the two. So if I'm switching that signal over, it looks like this. And this is the aspect for going slow. As you can see, there's also a second light, it's a yellow one, uh, in the original uh, signal from the second last century of the Deutsche uh, Reichsbahn. Uh, there was also a gas lamp that lighted or was lighted constantly in order to save some battery power here. Um, I have configured the Matsu layout controller in a way that the yellow signals actually not just hidden but completely switched off when there is the red or the green aspect and the yellow light is not needed. But that's uh, absolutely configurable uh, by you. You can do it as you want. Talking about battery, uh, what you've probably missed is that there is no cable. Uh, there, there is no cabling to operate the signal. And that has a reason. Uh, as you have seen here in that little house, there is, of course, the servo to power up the movement of the signal, but there's also the Matsu controller right inside and a little 9 volt battery. And this is a complete package. You can take it out of the box, put it somewhere on your layout, and you're done without any wiring. So maybe this uh, little uh, test that I've done here might also be a good idea for sensors and switches in the future. We will have a look at it and maybe there is some innovation in that area as well in the near future. So, but let's have a look at more features of firmware 0.5. Uh, of course, we have some trains here as well. And probably the most important innovation in that firmware release is the Matsu train controller for Bluetooth. Thanks very much, Ray, for developing it. The Matsu train controller for Bluetooth is, as the name already uh, says, controlling Bluetooth devices. We've got two different kinds of Bluetooth devices here on our LEGO uh, layouts. First one is the LEGO powered up unit, of course. And the second one is the S-Brake. 
Yes. With this firmware release, we also have support for S-Bricks. I will cover that in a separate video in more detail. But that is very good news for you because you can use all of your power functions, motors and power functions battery boxes now and uses, uh, use it with, with very um, innovative technology, uh, Bluetooth connectivity and you don't have to build and solder your Matsu train controllers yourself. Just use an s brick and uh, not to forget, uh, in comparison to Lego Powered Up, you've got four ports on an s brick So, for example, you can control two motors, two train motors, and two different sets of power functions lights. And that's very good news. Okay, so let's uh, try if that works. Um, I've got two trains here, both have uh, Bluetooth controllers inside, and let's see if we can make this work. Uh, shall we start the Eurostar? Yes. Signal is turning green. Beautiful. That worked very well. Let's try the other train. Ah no, Eurostar was first. But the next one should be the regional express here. So that is wonderful to see it's all working perfectly. Uh, another thing that you might have seen here is uh, a little uh, device with a display. It's called a speedometer. And a speedometer is measuring the, the speed of the train. Uh, it has two sensors connected here. Uh, we have a defined distance and the device is simply measuring the time that a train takes to pass uh, from the first sensor to the second one and then uh, divides the distance by the time. You know how that works uh, and calculates the speed, usually in stats per second, yeah, but you can also have kilometers an hour upscaled to 1 to 38 or any other any other measurement, you can configure that freely. Um, and a very nice, playful feature uh, is that it not just displays a speed, but if you want, it also displays the length of the train. And that can be measured if you have more than one magnet in the train, for example, one magnet uh, in the front and another one in the back. Uh, if the sensor knows the speed and the time between the sensor uh, events on a single sensor also can calculate the length of the train. Uh, it, it's not really required for anything, but well, good to know and good to compare if you've got a good speed value here. Our measurement has indicated that they are uh, really good. So in the area of one to two bricks uh, um, uh, precision, uh, we can uh, have with this speedometer, which is a fantastic uh, value, of course. Yeah, what did I forget? Oh, yes, uh, another signal type. So for those of you who are interested in really complicated and complex signals, this is a German distance signal, Vorsignal or uh, pre-signal. And uh, this one is really complicated. It has a movable uh, round plate here. It has some kind of a bar which also moves and it has some uh, lights which also work with those kinds of uh, colors uh, and transparent round plates as in the real world. Uh, so if we try to make this move, you see this is 
uh, an indication that the next main signal is actually green. That's the indication for next main signal is set to go slow. And this is expect stop at the main at the next uh, main signal. So that's really a complicated signal. It took me a lot of time to build it. Hope you like it as well. And building instructions are as always on the website. So, and there is a lot of other things in that firmware release, uh, which I didn't cover in detail here. We have improved configuration for the Matsu layout controller for level crossings. And uh, we also have a multi-leaf bascule bridge now. So a bascule bridge can have more than one leaf uh, and they work independently and you can orchestrate them. Uh, we have a very flexible signal configuration, of course. Uh, and a um, lot of small bug fixes and other great stuff that's inside. So if you are a Matsubix user or you intend to become one, firmware uh, 0 0.5 is definitely uh, a version that you should upgrade to. I hope you liked it. Um, in the end, uh, I will let the trains run a little bit uh, enjoy it uh, and don't forget to subscribe our social media channels to stay up to date with any more stuff on Lego train automation and stay tuned in, in, in the next couple of weeks and months I'm uh, intending to publish uh, some more videos on the details of signals and other important stuff. Hang on, goodbye!